What's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we've got some awesome stuff to talk about. Uh, some super important concepts, words, vocab, words, whatever you want to call them, uh, that I think often get overlooked uh, when you're talking with drummers uh, a lot of the time. Uh, the three words um, are all starting with the letter T, so three T's. Uh, the first one is kind of the overarching word, uh, and it's tone. Uh, the tone just is the sounds, the kind of sounds you're getting out of a drum kit. The next two are that support tone uh, is touch, how you hit the drums, and then tuning, how you tune your drums a specific way. So let's start with tuning. Um, tuning is, I feel like, kind of a lonely subject. I feel like most people don't really care about how they tune their drums. Um, you know, get it to sound they like, and then they're happy. But I think that tuning um, should be taken seriously, especially when you're approaching different styles of music. Um, and so two really contrasting ways that I use tuning uh, are in the genre of jazz or Latin sort of club, small combo style music, um, and then rock bigger audience, bigger performance, bigger show, bigger sound. Um, and so, you know, most of us don't have the luxury of owning, you know, three or four drum kits where we can use different sizes and woods to give us different sounds. So let's just take, you know, for example, kind of a standard kit. Like this is a, a Mapex Meridian Maple five-piece kit, okay? Um, I feel like this is kind of a stock Okay, so if I'm gonna play in a jazz context, I want the little nuances of my playing, the little touches, the little ghost notes uh, to be heard. So I'm gonna crank my drums tighter. I'm gonna crank the snare pretty high, it's a good snare response, so you, to do that, you tighten the bottom fret pretty tight, so the snares, the little wires, are responding to the head, the vibrations in the head. Uh, and then I'm gonna tune the, the toms up high too. Um, Mostly because I don't want a big fat sound in a jazz setting, and I want my little, you know, ghost notes and flashy, fancy uh, things to to be heard. Uh, and most of that is because um, often when you're playing uh, jazz, it's in a like a club or a, a coffee shop where there's like a lot of people kind of crammed on the stage, a combo quartet, quintet, whatever, um, and it's a small room that doesn't suit just really smashing loud playing. So uh, the other side of that was like rock or worship. Um, and for that, even with these you know smaller drums, you can get nice, fat, big tones out of your drum kit. Uh, and the ways that you're going to do this, I like to do this, is for the snare drum. Uh, you tune the, t the bottom head tight. And then if you have a small little, like this is like I think a 6, a six by 14 or whatever shell. Um, Take the top head off, fold up a piece of paper towel is a good trick, tape it onto the bottom of the head, put the head back on, and then just finger tight usually is, is plenty um, uh, to get that nice, fat, kind of punch sound um, where you still have the attack, but it's low and really just thuddy, like you can't. Uh, and then the toms, um, same kind of thing, loose, pretty loose, and then it's all about deadening. Moon gels, paper towel, duct tape, you know, anything you can do to place around sometimes three, four pieces of tape or whatever you're using to deaden those kind of resonating high looming frequencies so you're just getting a strong attack with a kind of a low thud. Same thing with the kick, kind of tune it down, make it punchy, make it thuddy. So for touch, for those kind of two opposing styles, uh, super simple. Uh, but just dynamics is a huge aspect to um, kind of the touch you're using to, to support the music. We always want to support the music, make better quality sounding music. Not, you know, no one wants to hear crappy music. You know, try to listen to what's going on and adjust how you play to make it better. You know, nothing is worse than you're, and when you're in a jazz, like a small jazz club, and someone's like. <laughs> Yeah, it's 
like, okay, easy, animal, chill out. Like, I'm deaf now. Thank you. Um, so just calm down, relax, you know. So just relax, stay calm, um, loosen up. Same thing as on the other side. If you're going into like a worship rock scene and you're just like... Oh my goodness, you're you're just being so wimpy, like hit the freaking drums, like come on, like smash it, you know, wail, like let it all out. You know, don't be afraid to really hit hard, snap, kinda really snapping on the on the drum, not like a lighter lift off, you know. Just... that you can use. Uh, the best way to kind of implement these is by playing with people in a live setting um, and adjusting to that context. Not, you know, in here in a practice room, you know, in your little science lab where you're like smashing out animals as leaders or whatever. That's not the best way to implement these tools. Playing live with real people. Yes, it's true. Real musicians. Other, there's a lot of them out there. Um, get together. Play. And that's really how you can implement these these three T's of tone and then touch, how you're playing, and then tuning, how you're tuning your drums to support those. Thanks guys. Have a good one.